you're tuned into Toby Talks, episode 36. Let's talk about going from bedside to case management with case manager Deanna Cooper Gillingham. Let me be the first one to confess. I originally had no idea what a case manager does, like literally. And I know I am not the only nurse out there, especially at the bedside, because we real quick to be like, oop, that's not my job, that's case manager. Oop, I'm more afraid you to case management, they got you. I think we as nurses, we also develop a silo within ourselves and we don't even know it. We don't even know what other nurses that are playing other roles in our healthcare system does. Well, here's some fun facts. Do you know that a case manager will find out what services you need? Not only that, but where you live. They're almost like an Uber of healthcare, right? They need to know what's in your location and how to get you there. And not only that, does your insurance cover it? There is a handful of things that case managers does, and I was blown away today with my guests going into details about it. And y'all, I was this close from quitting my job and becoming a case manager, because I was like, what? Y'all can work from home too? Mm, God is good. But I'm getting too excited. Let me go ahead and hop into this conversation. I'm actually really, really excited to hop into this conversation so we can really talk about the amazing thing you do in nursing. But before we start, Girl, tell me, how did you even get into nursing? Like, what made you say, yep, that's it. That's the path I want to go down. My mom had a few friends that were nurses, Mm -hmm. and they were like, no, you don't want to do that. (laughs) This was back in the 80s, 1980s, and so um, I did not. I went to college for something else, and after a year, I hated it. Mm. Um, I was going to look at microscopes all day, and I could not look in those microscopes for eight hours a day. So I actually quit college, got married, had a couple kids, and then said, you know what? I want to be a nurse. And from that point on, that's all I've ever wanted, and I have absolutely loved it. Oh, wow. You knew. You were like, uh, okay, I'll go down that route of what my parents want me to do. Figure it out. Don't want to do it. And I say that a lot because that was exactly my experience, too. My parents wanted to be a pharmacist. And I was like, look, I cannot be a legal drug pusher for the rest of my life. I cannot sit around <laughs> counting pills. <laughs> that's not what I want to do. Um, but going down the path of nursing has really been a, a wonderful career experience for me. So when you got into the path of nursing and you went through nursing school, where did you start and where are you, where are you now in, in your nursing career? So I started off um, in an associate degree program, my local community college. Like I said, I was married and had two kids. So going back to a four-year college really wasn't in the cards for me. And then at that time, like two years before when I started nursing school, there was a big nursing shortage in our area. They were giving big sign-on bonuses and all that. By the time I graduated, it was flooded. There were too many nursing schools in my area, so you could not get a job anywhere. Um, I was lucky enough to finally get a job in the hospital because of some connections that I had. And um, honestly, my nursing career has just been going from one great opportunity to another since then. I've worked in a lot of different areas. Hmm. I like how you shared that experience of the fact that you went back to school with a full-blown family. And I think a lot of people kind of um, bypass that and feel like, oh, well, I'm already, you know, in my stages of life as a family or as a, in a different career field, and I really can't go back to school. And I like to promote the fact that you can actually start, like you said, from your associate's degree. You don't have to, like, jump and go into a four-year degree. Ain't nobody got time or money for that. And I like, to fa- I like the fact that you actually are sharing that feedback about, hey, I went through the associate route. So going down the associate path, did that get in the way of you growing in your nursing field? Because I know a lot of times we hear that, you know, you need to have a bachelor's to get a su- specific opportunities in the hospital or to get in specific positions. How long or are you still an associate or did, your, did you have to change and go back and get your bachelor's or get a master's as you grew in your nursing career? That is a great question. When I graduated with my associates, I was probably the person in the class that everybody thought would go on to get their bachelor's or master's. Um, I love learning. Um, I I love college. I loved everything about it. But because I did have two kids, (laughs) that really wasn't in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, but I did a lot of other things. I would go to get continuing education. I would take courses at the community college on different things like critical care courses or on a specific subject. So I was always learning. As far as holding me back, um, I did have one job when I was working for the Veterans Administration where um, I was actually 
interim working in the role, mm-hmm. but I couldn't actually get the job because I didn't have a bachelor's. Mm. And at the time I had two kids that were getting ready to start college and I'm like, I can't afford three college educations right now. So I decided to um, leave that job and actually it was a case management position. And now I have written books to help people to become case managers. So even though I wasn't qualified for that job, I still was able to go out and make a career in it. Mm, Okay, well, let's go ahead and just jump into that because that makes it even more exciting to find out more. So currently in your career field right now, you're a case manager in nursing. Can you tell me more about that? Because I know we hear about that a lot, like there's case management in hospitals, case management in insurance company, but what does that really mean? What what does a case manager, um, what does a nurse working in a case manager role really entail? Do you mind sharing more details about that? Yes, I would love to. So a case manager wears many hats. Um, Primarily, she's a patient advocate, Um, but they do other things like discharge planning, um, transitions of care. They coordinate DME. They coordinate between different hospitals. They do, um, they do patient education. There's so many different hats that you can wear in that patient advocate role. So, but our, our primary thing is always looking out for the patient. You know, what, where is the patient? Looking at social determinants of health. You know, it's great that we can send them home. We can have the best discharge plan in the world. But if nobody asks, do you have a way to get to the pharmacy to get your prescription filled? Then it doesn't matter that they have. Mm. If, if um, home care never shows up, it doesn't matter that you had home care set up. So we are the ones that are, first of all, making a plan with the, the patient. Mm-hmm. What, what is your goal? Do you want to go to a SNF? Do you, you know, get some rehabilitation before you go home? Do you want to go home with home health? You know, we let them know what their options are and what, their, what would be in their best interest. But then ultimately we understand that it is their decision and we help them to get where they want to be and reach their goals. Wow. So you talked, um, you just gave a really good synopsis and I would like to even jump more into that because you, you talked about discharge planning and then you talked about transition of care. And I know a lot of people who have never really heard those kind of terminologies or understand what does that mean? What do you mean you're planning the discharge? Discharge from where? And what does transition of care mean? What, where are they transitioning their care to? So do you mind elaborating on Um, the discharge planning aspect, and even when you talk about the transition of care and what that looks like that um, that allows you to coordinate a lot of the benefits outside of that with, you know, home health and and DME and things like that. So when we're taking care of patients as a nurse, we don't care if that patient in the bed has insurance, doesn't have insurance, has Mm -hmm. the best insurance available. We're taking care of them all the same. Mm -hmm. But as a case manager, it's real important for us to know, does the patient have a benefit to go to rehab? Do they have a benefit to go to a skilled nursing facility? Do they have a home care benefit? How good is that benefit? So it's great if the doctor says, hey, they can go home with home care. And if they don't have a home care benefit, then maybe we should suggest that they go to a SNF instead to get that rehab that they need. So that's just a quick look at the discharge planning and what goes into that. Do they have a family that's going to be able to take them to outpatient appointments? Um, So maybe they can do outpatient therapy But if they don't have a family that can take them to outpatient appointments and they can't drive or take themselves, then maybe we need to look at home health or a SNF. So there's a, Mm. and then there's different qualifications just to meet SNF criteria versus rehab criteria. Rehab is a better and higher level of care if you're looking at um, inpatient rehabilitation, but you have to be able to do three hours of physical therapy, or I'm sorry, three hours of therapy a day mm-hmm. to qualify for that. So the case manager knows all of this, and we help to transition that patient to the best place where they need to be. Wow. I, I'm just blown away because it, it just seems like a whole different world that a case management deals with. It's more that holistic care of the patient leaving the hospital and now going back home and going back into their um, their community, whereas bedside nurses, our care is to make sure you're well and together to go home, right? So it's almost like we're passing the baton. Like, yes. hey, we've taken care of them here in the hospital. Now we're passing the baton to another nurse that's going to help you get your care coordinated outside of the hospital and back home. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly, yes. And we have a saying in case management that discharge planning begins on admission because you really got to start looking at that patient the day that they hit the floor and decide, are they going to be able to go back to their previous arrangement or are they going to need some something, a bridge to get them back there? 
That's that's really that's a really good perspective to look at, because then you don't want to waste your time of getting things coordinated for them at the day of they're about to leave versus you got they're in the hospital and you're start already preparing what their um, their going out of the hospital is going to look like, what it's going to look like going back home. So I wonder, because, you know, um, you talked a lot about knowing the benefits, knowing what kind of insurance they have and what, um, how they're going to be able to pay for these services that they're going to need outside of the hospital to continue their care. So as nurses who work at the bedside, who we're really not exposed to the insurance aspect, like you said, we just give the care. We don't care if you have insurance or no insurance. We give you the same standard quality care that we give everyone. So if I'm a bedside nurse and I actually want to transition or want to know more about case management and what that entails and being exposed to the insurance aspect of things, how do you even get started if that's something that we're not really exposed to working at the bedside? That is a great question. Um, I have a Facebook group with about 11,000 members and a lot of those members are brand new case managers. And those brand new case managers they, that's one of the biggest hurdles that they have to overcome is learning everything that you need to know to be a case manager. We've talked about a lot of different things here that bedside nurses don't do. So um, you can definitely learn it on the job, but it, there seems to be a lot of stress associated with that because you're learning so many new things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We actually, um, we started about not quite a year ago, we came out with a course called Foundations of Case Management that teaches these things like the insurance principles, the standards of practice for case management, transitions of care, um, requirements. There are certain government requirements, you know, JACO requirements that you have to meet. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. we, we kind of teach all of that so that when a person goes into one of these roles, they at least have that background information. It's not going to give you the experience, but at least it's kind of like nursing school where you learn the theory and then you get out there and you start practicing it. So how did you, you know, starting off in um, from, you know, going to the bedside and, and getting into case management, what skills and what did you do to kind of transition yourself um, and what opportunities did you find that allowed you to even get to learn more or network with those who are already in those positions that helped you grow to where you are now? My transition into case management is kind of a funny story. Um, I was working and I had an, an injury that I wouldn't, I wasn't able to work mm-hmm. on the floor for like, I went from 12 hours to eight hours to four hours and I just couldn't, oh, wow. I couldn't walk anymore. On, on mm-hmm. So um, a friend of mine had been trying for years. She's like, you need to get into case management. She worked in utilization management for a company and sat right next to the case managers. And she's like, you would be perfect for this job. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I love like holding my patient's hands and talking to them and just, yeah. you know, starting an IV and all that. I just, I love that patient contact and interaction. So finally, when I realized I wasn't going to be able to work on the floor anymore, I took her advice and she had got me the email address of the manager. And so I sent her my email Uh, my resume via email and a week later she didn't respond so my friend kind of snuck me her phone number at work come on connections (laughs) yes friend Mm. yes so I called her and when I called her she's like oh I only have about five minutes but I want to ask you a few questions to get you know had a chance to call you yet Mm -hmm. she she ended up keeping me on the phone for an hour and by the time I was off the phone she's like okay, I want to hire you. I need you to fill out an application. So it's not the traditional way of, and of getting into case management. Um, I had a lot of experience at that point. I had been a nurse for probably about almost 20 years at that point. Mm. So I had a very diverse background in nursing, and that's what she liked. Plus, I'm, as you can tell by my voice, I'm very passionate about what I do. Mm-hmm. And she heard, about, she heard that passion that I have for taking care of my patients, and that's why she thought I would be a good fit for her organization. We'll see. Look, not only do you have the passion, you know how to, uh, you, look, you are persistent in opportunities. And sometimes you got to be persistent in opportunities. Not only did you have your friend, you know, get slide you that email, she didn't email you back. She slid you that number and you <laughs> slid into that office. So that's that's the thing about opportunity. Sometimes you have to be persistent in it. And I love the fact that that was an opportunity that you, you know, you were persistent about. You're like, hey, you know, and she only look five minutes turned into an hour and bam, a new job. Um, so I. I think that's awesome that you you talked about that because a lot of people don't realize that using your network, using the relationships that you have within your organization and the friends that you have working in different places can also give you an opportunity to get into another um, another career field in nursing. So 
the fact that you had those 20 years of experience, would that be challenging to, let's say, a new grad nurse or millennial nurse who probably has two or three years of experience or even less than that, who might see that, hey, you know, I might want to dibble dabble into case management. This might be a field that I want to work in or things have happened in my life. Kind of like an example for you, you know, you couldn't really do the bedside, but you found another opportunity to get into nursing. Do you have to have the extensive amount of years at the bedside to be able to um, be a good case manager or see the, the, the kind of care that you can give in this position? You do not have to have 20 years. Having experience is definitely helpful, but it does not have to be that much experience. And there are different types of case managers. For example, if you're um, a NICU case manager and mm-hmm. you talk to new moms that are bringing babies home from the hospital and you have five or 10 years of NICU experience, then you would be perfect for that job. Okay. So it definitely it definitely is depending on the areas that you worked in um, and the experience that you have. So every different field in nursing has case managers. Is that what I'm hearing? Like, you, I know you gave the example of NICU. Would that be the same for like PEDS or for med surge? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say med surge, but med surge is a great background because it gives you that overall ability to take care of just about any patient. But um, yeah, there are behavioral health case managers, there are pediatric case managers. You'd be surprised at the case managers that are out there. Complex case managers, so people who have worked in ICU, they might get something like a complex complex case management position. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different roles for the case manager, even doctor's offices. There are um, case managers that work in doctor's offices. Wow, I didn't realize they were just they were all over the place. I mean, granted, now in my position, I I know obviously, but I mean, when I was a new grad and I was in nursing school, that wasn't really something that they talked about a lot about. You know, having a nurse that's passing the baton from inpatient to now this is your nurse as you go back into your home life and then back into your community that's going to help you manage your case or manage your your care holistically. And I think that's really um, that's really good to know. But not only that. If you are transitioning from, you know, bedside to case management, what does your everyday, like, routine looks like? Because we're used to, you know, 12 hours on the shift, on our feet, you know, back and forth here and there. So now that we're transitioning into, you know, another role where it's the holistic care, what does that look like? What is your everyday life like as a case manager? Well, depending on your where you work, your place of employment, it'll really define what your day looks like. If you're an inpatient case manager, your day is going to look a lot different than if you're a workers' compensation case manager who's like working out in the field and going to doctor's appointments with patients versus if you work for an insurance company and you may work in an office or work from your home. So it really depends, but basically what you're doing is the one important thing with all of those case managers is you have to really be one of those people who just can look at their day, what they have in front of them to do, and start doing it without any direction. Case managers don't get somebody, like you don't get report and say, okay, you need to pass this med at this time, or you need to have this patient here at this time. You're basically looking at these are the patients that need discharged, these are the patients that were admitted, these are the problems that we're having, and now go solve it. So you have to be able to prioritize and solve it on your own. And even if you're working isn't for an insurance company. You have patients that are maybe getting a procedure and you need to call and make sure that they understand where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be, any pre-op instructions to make sure they have a a smooth transition. Um, There's just so you have to really be able to think on your own and prioritize your day. Wow. So I see where the experience comes into play, because I think that'd be really challenging if you haven't had to, you know, build that time management skills already with your patients, especially I know for me as a new grad, that was a, the first That first year was the most challenging of having to balance where you have this patient coming in from uh, surgery, you have these patients and medications to do, you have this and this and this, um, and you have to learn how to manage your, your time and your skills. But the difference, too, is also you have a team. So it seems like as a case manager, you're working more independently and managing those that care of the member. Is that what I'm hearing? It's definitely much more independent. Um, I'm not saying that you don't have any resources or any backup, but you're pretty much expected to handle your caseload on your own. Um, But you do need to know when to ask for help, especially when you're starting off. But, you know, just like with nursing, nobody knows everything and you have to know who you can go to for what. That's probably one of the most important things for a case manager is you have to know the the person that you can go to and rely on for different things, whether it's um, a sniff that is able to take that 
difficult patient or whether it's a coworker that's able to help you out when you're a little bit overwhelmed. You kind of have to know who your resources are. Hmm, that's so true. Because even at the bedside, if you didn't know who to call for what, you'd be stuck all the time. So it's always good to know your resources. But did your pay change? Because I hear a lot of good things about, you know, case management. It's like, oh, I can do, I can do tele, um, I can work from home, I can work remotely, and my pay increased, actually. I don't have to work as much at the bedside. So do you mind shining light on that? Like, what was the pay like? Like, for real, for real. Because some people were like, look, I don't want to do that if I ain't going to pay that much. Or I want to do that, but still be able to work PRN at the bedside? Yeah, that is a great question. And I will be honest with you, it depends on who you're working for. The first company that I worked for, their philosophy was, well, you're not working weekends or evenings, so we don't have to pay you quite as much. <laughs> and yes, <Is> that <laughs> and because I was new at case management, they mm -hmm. didn't feel, and even though I had a lot of nursing experience, they didn't feel that they should have to pay as much. But they did require to make it me to get certified. And once I got certified, even though they didn't want to pay me anymore, I was able to find another company that actually paid me more than I had ever made as a bedside nurse. Oh, wow. And you got to keep your weekends and holidays? And I got to keep my weekends and holidays. Girl, yes. come and through. I got to work from home, 100% from home. Wow. So even as a case manager, you can even work from home. You can work remotely. You don't have to always be in the office or anything like that. You can actually have that freedom. Is that what I mean? Because that sounds dope. It is, yes. And that was, for me, that was one of the real selling factors for case management. So you, you said um, you talked more on the fact of um, the pay changing and the expectations, especially once you got your certification. So there's certifications, there, there's classes out there that people can get certified in um, being a case manager. And, I, and I, I am talking about this specifically because you also, you stated that you don't have a bachelor's and you can do this with your associate's degree, right? That's right. Um, the qualification, the case management certification that I chose is considered the gold standard. It's the CCM, which is Certified Case Manager, which is administered through um, ccmcertification.org. And they really do have the gold standard. Their requirements are you have to have either a license that allows you to conduct an independent assessment. So you don't have to be a nurse. You can be a social worker. You can be a pharmacist. You can oh, be a physical wow. therapist, occupational therapist, speech therapist. I just helped a respiratory therapist get her CCM certification recently. So, yes. So, as long as you have a license that allows you to conduct an independent assessment and you've worked as a case manager for one or two years, depending on who you work under, you can sit for the certification. Shut up. I did not even know that. So, you can be a case manager outside of just specifically having a nursing license. That's Come correct. Comes through. Okay. Side hustle on deck. So do you have to be full-time case manager? I mean, kind of like what you were stating um, before your injury and what kind of led you into case management where you love that patient interaction, love to take care of patients. Is there a way or it, being a case manager, could you balance that? with also being able to still hold a bedside position if you still miss that one-on-one -on -one patient interaction? Most case management positions are full-time. Um, our most recent salary and trend sh survey showed about 85 to 90 percent of people that are working as case managers are doing it full-time, but I like side hustles, so I did have a side hustle while I was doing my case management because I work Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I was available evenings and weekends to do something on the side. Nice. But realistically, the amount of work that you see on nine to five can be challenging to hold another, you know, part time job or like, you know, side hustle job unless it's like the weekend availabilities. Right. That's correct. I, my job was a little bit different. Um, I actually was a patient representative for an external defibrillator company. So they would just call me up and be like, hey, we have a patient that's in the hospital. They want to go home. They need to be taught. A nurse had to go out there and teach them about the external defibrillator, fit them for it, and train them. And it would take anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours. So I could go out after work and do that as my side hustle. Wow. So I kind of want to shift gears um, really quickly on this conversation because I'm very intrigued on just how you have, you know, navigated yourself to be in a position of um, enjoying what you love and qual I mean, what you love in nursing, which is case management. But on top of that, being a woman who actually owns her own um, business as well. So you're using this as an opportunity to also help others in case management. And I just really want to know, like, how do you balance that? I mean, I, I have the opportunity to get 
getting to interview a lot of nurses who also have a side hustle or a business on the side, and they're still being a nurse that's impacting patients every day. And you're a mom. This so was like you're adding so many other things to your plate. But how do you balance all of this, especially doing what you do now? Well, about three years ago, um, everything kind of came to a head. I was doing my business as a side hustle. And I was working full time for a company and the, my side hustle at that time was I had, was helping people to pass the certification exam that I had passed. So um, I basically I wrote a book helping people to pass this exam, but the people who wrote the exam changed the exam. So I was going to have, I had three months to write a new book and it took me a year to write the book previously. And I thought, oh, I just got to update it. I can do this. Well, about two weeks in, I realized it was never going to happen. I had a choice to make at that time. I could give up on the book or I could quit my job. So at that time, this is going to sound crazy, but I sold everything I owned, my house, everything except for my car and what would fit in my car. <laughs> and I sold everything, quit my job and went full time with my business. Wow. Wow. That's like a huge leap on faith. Wow. So what was that like? Like, was it challenging? Was it tough? Did you have, because I mean, I, I hear a lot of nurses too, who have so much passion and belief on what they're doing that started off as a side hustle. And now is like their full blown career. And you never really get to hear the backstory of, yes, it looks successful now. Yes, I'm doing great. But these were some of the sacrifices I had to make and some of the challenges I had to do to get to where I am. So did you have challenges? I mean, obviously packing everything you and only <laughs> everything that can fit in the car sounds challenging enough, but getting to the part of where you are right now, where you're enjoying the fruit of your labor, what challenges did you face? Um, it was definitely challenging. It's very scary to leave your employer, especially at that time I had what I thought was the ultimate job. I was working full time mm. for a company that really appreciated me and the value that I could bring to their to their customers. I was able to work from home. My boss was awesome. Um, I had a lot of autonomy. So it was really hard. I was getting vacation. I was getting bonuses. It was really hard to leave. But on the other hand, I could see these people that I was impacting. And I was getting these emails saying, oh my gosh, you helped me. I would have never been able to pass if it wasn't for you. Thank you. And I realized that these people are impacting so many other people. So I kind of went from me just helping my patients to me helping other case managers so that they can help their patients. Wow, wow, wow. And balancing, you know, having your kids and like, and I, I can only imagine what that fear feels like because even now I'm like, I enjoy my side hustle, but I enjoy the fact that I have uh, benefits. I have an employer that I know every two weeks I'm going to get a paycheck. Um, and sometimes shifting from what you have a passion for and, and, and jumping full into that can be the biggest challenge ever. So during that time where you had to make this decision, what helped you the most um, to stay on this path of knowing that you made the right choice, knowing that this is direction I'm going into. Um, what helped you along the way? I know a lot of people have said, oh, I had a mentor or I had support from, you know, friends and family to keep going. What was your support factor um, in this decision of, you know, let this be my full time, ded dedicated uh, time to help nurses be the best that they can to provide good care for our or great quality care for our patients? Um, things just started to kind of line up. My children were all graduating and moving away, so I didn't have the responsibility that I had had earlier. And um, I had a business coach who gave me who gave me a lot of advice and listening to them, looking at the financials and the way things were going, projecting whether, you know, what was going to happen next. I felt confident, but it was still really scary. Mm. Now, I will say that I have a great support system. I have wonderful friends. I have a great family. So I kept looking at the worst case scenario. Okay, what if I end up homeless, on the streets, and no income. And I knew my mom would let me come live with her. <laughs> I had friends that would let me come live with them. And I had friends that would help me get a job. So I felt like, okay, worst case scenario, this totally flops. I still have a backup plan. I'm not going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. 
that's always good, right? To make sure we got a roof over our head. <laughs> that makes it a little bit more easier. Now, if you, you know, if you ain't got no friends and you ain't got no, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say, we go pray for you. But, um, but that's really good. And I appreciate you for sharing that because sometimes people need to hear that that's, you know, that you can take that leap of faith. You can go for what your heart truly desires to do. And especially if the outcome is you're not only just bettering the lives for nurses and helping them find their path, especially in case management, but you're also helping our, our health care, the transition of it, and, and helping have more patient advocates out there, right? Um, so I actually wanted to go back into the case management um, discussion, uh, specifically as we talk about burnout. Um, and I know as a, as a bedside nurse uh, previously, you know, I was easily burnt out, not only just by the, the expectations of what we give our patients every day at the bedside, the long hours, but then also trying to balance my life and the things that I want to do outside of my workspace. Do, do case managers, I mean, especially now that we know, you know, it's more of a nine to five and you can work from home and, and different things like that, but do nurses that are in case management, do they experience burnout or is there any kind of challenges in this field that, you know, you wish you knew before you got into it? Yeah, um, case managers definitely can get burned out too. You're dealing with usually the most complex cases, the easy ones that are going home to their, you know, to their husband or wife that are going to take care of them and they don't have any needs are not the ones that you usually spend a lot of time with. It's the more difficult ca cases that you spend all the time with. So it's very easy to get burned out. And part of it is just knowing what you can do and control and what you can't do and control and taking time for yourself, just making sure that you really – Take time to, mm -hmm. you know, re-energize re yourself. It's just, you know, the old saying about putting your oxygen mask on first because you can't help anybody if you're tired. And there's always more work to be done. And I think especially when you work from home because you can't just leave the office. You know, you can walk out of that room, but that computer's still there. And yeah. a lot of people who work from home find themselves working a lot longer than they should mm -hmm. because they'll go and they'll make dinner for their family. And then they'll be like, oh, well, the kids are watching TV. I'm going to go and just work on a couple emails real quick. And they find them. So you have to really set those boundaries of, no, when my day is done, it's done. Just like when you worked at the hospital and you left, you have to just put those boundaries up and know that you're not going to work past your normal working hours. Hmm. That's a really good perspective, and I think a lot of people don't really realize that. They think, like, oh, the flexibility of working from home is, is so awesome, but then it, it does raise that challenge of knowing, knowing when to turn it off, knowing when this is enough, you know, and especially when it's there in your home. Your home is your office. Um, you, have to, you have to be able to turn that off to say, okay, I need to disconnect. Um, and, and I think it's kind of interesting, too, as a case manager, and we talk about, you know, knowing the benefits, knowing these um, provider agencies and companies and things like that. Is building that relationship very important for the success of the patient? I kind of want to get more understanding of that because it seems like as a case manager, you also have to know the different community resources too, right? It's not just knowing that this is the benefits, these are the check the boxes, but you actually have to be engaged with the community. Um, am, I, am I kind of right saying that or am I going off a whole different path? You are absolutely right. That's actually one of the things that I teach at the very beginning of um, the foundations of case management is, you know, is case management right for you? And one of the questions I ask is, if people run away from you when they see you coming, you will not be successful as a case manager. You have to be able to collaborate with people of all different backgrounds, from doctors to the janitor. You have to be able to talk to everybody. You have to be able to get their input. You just need to be able to, you have to have really good interpersonal skills mm -hmm. because you want to be the person that when you leave a voicemail, they're happy to hear that you left a voicemail and they're happy to call you back. You're not the one that they're putting at the bottom of the list like, oh, no, I got to talk to her again. Whew, I know that's right. Because I, I know there's some people I'm like, okay, we're going to skip that voicemail, skip, skip, come back to her later because I can't deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to hear that that's really true of knowing your community. And I think that's what raises more of the question of that diversity and inclusion, because especially being a case manager, right, you're, you're going to oversee the holistic care of this patient. But if you're not in tune with the different cultural background that the, inpatient, that the patient is um, from or the different um, religious background the patient might have, it would be really challenging to coordinate their care. Um, am I right about that? Because I know 
I mean, even as a nurse, I have to know the different cultural back. I mean, that's a part of our, our foundation is nursing, being exposed to the cultural background and making sure everyone is included and knowing, okay, in this community, this is where they usually go grocery shopping. This is the kind of food that they eat, or this is the kind of um, skills and activities that they like to do. How can I coordinate that care um, in the part of their, their holistic plan, right? Exactly. It's all about, and we talked about this way at the beginning of the interview, where it's all about them and making their goals and what's important to them, because what's important to us may not be what's important to them. And a great example of that is like end of life care. There are some cultures that um, you do everything to save a life. And if that means they're on you know, a ventilator for the next 10 years, that's okay. And then there are other cultures where, you know, life is what they can do and what they can perform and how productive they are. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know and understand it doesn't matter what we think, mm -hmm. you know, as the nurse or the case manager, it doesn't matter what we think. It's what's important to that patient that's laying in that bed and making sure that we, um, as a patient advocate, it, as a case manager, it is our job to find out what's important to that patient and then communicate it to the rest of the healthcare team so mm. that everybody's on the same page and understands, yes, we may want to give another round of chemo, even though they're actively dying. But if the patient says, no, I want to die with dignity, then we all have to pull back and say, no, this is what they want and it's okay. Hmm. Wow. That's a, that's a really good um, perspective you just brought into place, especially when we talk about, you know, bringing back, it's almost like you, you're not only, not almost, you are the advocate for the patient and you're bringing this information into the healthcare team. As a case manager, and, and especially when you have as a, or when you think of it as a patient, you know, you have your physical therapist, you have your doctors, you have your nutritionist, you have your wh whoever else in the multidisciplinary team is on board. You have all these people that you're connecting with. Is a case manager more of the funnel? Um, do they funnel all? Because I can I couldn't I couldn't imagine on the patient aspect of you getting called from the insurance company, you're getting called from your doctor's office, you're getting called from the you're getting so much information coming in that sometimes you kind of get lost in your own care. Does a case manager help funnel a lot of those communications, or at least help be the voice of the challenges that the patient are seeing when they're getting inundated with so much information from so many different specialties? Yes, exactly. Um, and when I worked as an insurance case manager, that was one of the things that sometimes the patients would just be like, oh, here you are, another person that's calling me. We have so many people calling. And the one thing that I would try to let them know was, I'm the one person who can put all these moving pieces together. So I can coordinate everything. I can make sure that your DME arrives when it's supposed to arrive. And I can make sure that your home health care shows up when they're supposed to show up and if you have conflict like if you have a doctor's appointment on one day but you need to see this other doctor the other a day before and you can't get in I can call and I can explain it maybe in a way that you can't mm. so I kind of like to think of us as the hub of the wheel mm -hmm. so everybody can kind of like come through us and then we can kind of help make sure that everything is done in the correct way because you you know patients that have gone through they've gone to a doctor's appointment and basically it was a waste of time because the doctor said well I needed to have this test and so come back, go get the test and come back. Yeah. And the patient wasted a day of their time. A lot of these patients, you know, they have transportation issues. They don't drive. There's different social determinants of health that you have to look at. And so, you know, them coming in for a wasted appointment. And then plus there's the monetary issue. So as a case manager, we can call that doctor and say, well, you know what? They didn't have this test done. Do you need this test prior? And if the doctor says yes, say, okay, well, we can't get the test until this date. Can we reschedule that appointment for a later time? And so because we have the background to know all of this, mm. we know what questions to ask, and we know to tell the patient, wait, you might want to hold off on that one until we do this first. Hmm. That's really, that's really, that's really interesting that you say that because I wonder, um, and I, I see this challenge a lot of that communication between all the different specialties and even with the case manager being involved, you know, um, and I work in a, in a, um, in a field where I, I deal with a lot of sick patients, right? Patients that are, you know, medically dependent, chronic with chronic illnesses, and they have so many different specialists they have to see for so many different um, illnesses that they deal with in their care that sometimes that communication isn't across the board. 
Um, and I see how the case manager plays a role in that. You know, the case manager knows, okay, you have this appointment, this appointment, this appointment. Okay, I'm going to coordinate this care with this care with this care. But does the information also go across um, across the board? So not only are you funneling it to the to the um, to the patient, but are you also the representative of funneling this back to all those to all of those who are involved in the care? It really depends. Um, in the best case scenario, yes, we are. Mm. Sometimes, you know, one of our jobs also is to empower our patients so can speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. But other times, they're too sick to do that. And mm. when they're too sick to do that or they can't do for themselves, you know, usually at the beginning of a case, like when I worked for insurance case management, I might have a patient for six months. So at the beginning, I'm doing a lot for them because they don't have the resources and the tools to be able to do for themselves. But as I'm doing for them, I'm also teaching them how to do for themselves. I'm teaching them you know, I'm helping them to discover what's important to them and how to communicate that to their caregivers and to their providers so that they can, they have a voice and that they can then do for themselves so that, because we're not going to be around forever. And when I discharge that patient at the end of what, three months or six months, I want to know that they now are empowered to go out and speak for themselves. Wow. So not only are you the, their advocate, but you're also giving them their voice back, um, especially as they start to get better in their care. That's, I, I love the fact that you said that as a, as a wrap up, cause that was good. I was like, okay, girl, she said, I'm giving you your voice back. I'm letting you know how to advocate for yourself. Now I'm equipping you to be able to take on um, being your own advocate as well. And I appreciate so much information you've given me, especially about case management. I mean, I think I, I, I appreciate a lot of times we know all these different fields that nurses work in, but we don't really appreciate and value what they bring to the table. In case management, for me, I value all my case managers because there's no way that we'd be able to transition this member's care back home, back into their community without advocates like you guys. Like, Hands down, I, I have to say I appreciate all the hard work you do. Um, there's so many people that y'all have to talk and coordinate, call insurance, go back and forth. I mean, good God, I couldn't even imagine doing your job for like half a day without taking my wig off. <laughs> I'd just be like, you know what, this is enough. <laughs> well, it does take um, a very definite set of skills um, to become a case manager and to be good at it, you know, to really and to love it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talked before about our salary and trend survey. We did one um, two years ago and we're getting ready to do another one. But one of the interesting things I found was we asked case managers if they were pleased with their current role as a case manager and 92% said yes. Wow. And that just, that just made my heart so happy to think that these people that are out there doing this job are happy that they're doing this job and that they're pleased with it because that's really what matters. You know, nobody wants a nurse or a case manager that doesn't want to be there working for their patient, their, I mean, working for their family member. Mm -hmm. We want somebody who really loves their job when it's our family member that they're working on. So I was really happy with that. Wow. So Deanna, I want you to share with many of my nurses out there or some of those who are even getting into the nursing field and thinking like down the road, man, I really want to do case management. What resources or um, where can they find you? How can they know more about you? And on top of that, what kind of advice or inspiration or encouragement can you give them, especially nurses who might be in the same situation you are? You know, I have a family, my life is changing, and I kind of want to change my career, and case management seems to be the place that I want to go. Or I'm burnt out, I'm tired, I'm stressed, and I, I want to give up on my license, but I need some kind of inspiration. What can you give my audience or my listeners um, that voice of reason, that voice of inspiration to keep going, especially in the, in the field of case management? I would love to just hear that from you. Yeah, I really believe that case management is a great place for burned out nurses. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there aren't stresses in case management because there are, but I think what I hear from a lot of nurses that are burned out is that they just, it's not what they wanted to do. It's not what they signed up for. You know, they're spending more time at the computer than they are with the patient. Now, I'm not going to tell you you're not going to be on the computer a lot as a case manager because you are, but you have such a good direct impact on that client and it is so rewarding to be able to have a client come back to you and say I would have never been through that made it through this without you or I would have never been able to get you know I don't know how I would have navigated all of this and got all of this done without you it's really a rewarding profession um, I would say that any nurse that has even a little bit of experience and is getting burned out and doesn't feel like it's what she signed up for to look into case management and see if it's right for you you know we do have um, I do have some resources one is just a checklist of 
what qualities and traits make a good case manager. We also have our, um, we're going to have our new salary and trends survey coming out um, at the beginning of next year, and I would be happy to share these resources with your listeners that are interested in case management. Mm, I hope y'all enjoyed today's conversation. I know I did. And even better, I don't have to worry about replaying because I got the Toby Talks app. Download Toby Talks app in the iOS or Android app store. The app has all the nursing resources, definitions, and so much more discussed on today's episode. Even better, every episode is timestamped that takes you directly to the episode of definition discussed. You can even bookmark it for later or share it with some of your nursing friends. So that means you don't need to worry about paper and pen no more, sis. Ambra, go ahead and get on that Toby Talks app. It's your one-stop shop for episodes and show notes. For more on Toby Talks, visit my website at www.tobytodge.com. And you know I love to hear from you guys, so feel free to slide into my DMs on IG or Facebook, or even send me an email at tobytalks at tobytodge.com. Again, that's tobytalks at tobytodge.com. Till next time, I can't wait to talk to you.